Is it blowing in the microphone too much? You can see it's a little bit of blowing, so maybe. But if it's okay, we can stay up here instead of sitting in the shade. Look at the weather. Up to. So the sun is almost staying up past closing. It's up there somewhere, just behind. <laughs> So I had time to post my link a little bit earlier today. I'm expecting results. <laughs> no, it was a little bit easier day today, but we're looking forward to a hell of a week. Um, 17th of May weekend. And 17th of May is on a Wednesday. So a lot of schools also have free on Thursdays and Fridays. Ours has free on Thursday, but my uh, ex is taking care of the kids on Friday. So I'm coming back on Tuesday and I'm here for the next weekend. Is it too windy in the microphone? It's starting to pick up a little bit. And we're having beautiful weather today. Um, I just put this on, you know, to hide my five extra necks, but it actually isn't necessary today. It was too warm, I had to take it off earlier. The waterfall came back. Uh, up there, I can be a weather girl. That one was, it's shellful since it's the biggest one. I can turn this around actually. That one was just, it was an ice block that was just leaking a little bit, but it is fully out now. You can see it. Oh, maybe the wind is picking up. Carl, I have Audra beer. Prepare to get plastered. <laughs> I don't know if you can see him down there. He's just gone behind the building at the end of his tour. <laughs> Anyway, before I make you all sick, we can do one more look at the uh, waterfalls. So the mountains are leaking. Are you inserting matchsticks to keep your eyes open? Raymond, it was worth it, look. Okay, now the wind is picking up just because I pure, just purely because I decided to sit up here on the hill. Let's see, how's everybody doing and who's here? While we stare at waterfalls. Actually, we can do a more zoom, it's just cool. Raymond was the first one on my chat. Congratulations. Uh, maybe it's because I got it up earlier. <laughs> He's working more on his cardigan and started on the collar. If you haven't seen that thing, you have to check it out. I think you have it posted in both in three null binding groups uh, in the regular null binding, null binding 2.0. Sorry, I can hold the camera still. And the um, null binding stitch along, sweater stitch along group. You have to see it is really cool. That is a lot of work. Kind of makes me miss doing a sweater, but literally after the blacksmith sweater, I think I've got to keep focusing on small little stuff for the store, especially because they're selling in the store quite regularly now. Um, Torben didn't make it first. S sucks to be you. <laughs> but sunny here in Hardanger. Torben, I've got some uh, really strong beer from uh, Latvia, from uh, Lithuania or Latvia. I always mix it up. Audra. So we have to, we were supposed to drink that last week, but we forgot. So Carl gets to drink it today. Uh, let's see, Albert is here, Kivi's here, Garcia's here, she's having beautiful weather in Holland. Uh, so we've got Holland, Norway representing, there's Peruta in Russia, I'll show she's moving. Uh, don't you people have anything better to do? I was killing skags until three minutes ago. <laughs> Amro is here in Belgium, Arlene is here, she's in the United States, no, Canada. Winnipeg, if I remember correctly. Uh, Yep, Prude is suffering from pollen. I've actually got some issues with that too. Okay, now that really blew in the microphone. Oh, good, I'm glad it, yeah, it's a very great view. No, it looks like I went into a green screen today. So, and the Vikings are starting to come. Oh, I feel like it's just massively blowing in the microphone. There you go. Modern Vikings. <laughs> no, that's because it's just closed, so now they can bring stuff into their houses and move in. Maybe if I pull it this way, we won't have that blowing so much. Oh, so you can see them and they're just arriving now. And they will continue to arrive until Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. And then it's full on Vikings for the weekend. We even, we're down to roommate status. So everybody has a house and two people have to share. Oh, this one was avalanching earlier today, by the way. Uh, it was avalanching from here to here. 
and then it kind of came down and had eventually enough force built up and went poof. But this is from before. The new stuff is there because now it is also, let's see, turned into a waterfall. So it's quite cool. So now it's kind of melting all that snow with it. But I guess if you look closely, you can see the layers and layers now it gets a little bit more muddier now uh, because it's bringing down rocks with it. There. In my next life, I'm gonna learn how to hold this more still. Okay, who else is here? Torben says, how strong? Strong as a small pony? I will show you. I think it's at least 7%. It's uh, and uh, Susan, oh, I, gotta, I can do this. Bulavinets, Bulavinets, I can like that. From New Jersey, if Cheeky Red shows up, you'll be another one from New Jersey. Okay. And I'm wearing my hair down because yesterday was shower day. <laughs> For the next couple of weeks, it'll probably be back up again. So, you know, take advantage. <laughs> Should we do a needle binding before Carl comes out? Then I'll turn this around. I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, if you're new, and welcome, Susan. Okay, let's see. But yeah, yell at me if it's blowing too much in the microphone. Let's see, I need to actually get in my bag. You can see the needle binding I did last week. I was actually pretty effective. I have the strangest pair of wrist warmers in there. Bind some needles, woman. That's right, Torben, are you ready for it? Do you want a sneak peek at the beer? That's what he's getting today. <laughs> I think that's the really strong one. One of them is near beer and the other two are strong, I believe. Yeah, this one's seven and a half percent. Some other one. Hey, it's a Carl. Are you ready to drink now? Will I show needle binding? Carl creeped up on me. Do you want to start with the near beer or the strong beer? I don't really think I want to touch the near beer. Because this one is seven. 7%. This one is the 7.5%. This is this is uh, Torben's portion. We, it used to be just purely near bonding and needle binding and biking, but we had to bring on the beer for Torben. And this is the near beer, which is alcohol free. Imperial Kvass. And she said, Was this was Latvia or Lithuania? I always mix this up. It's so bad. I'm going to hell. Actually, I think this is Lithuania. Yep. LT is Lithuania, yeah? LT. Oh, he must really tell us how it is. Okay, there you go. Here, hold that, Carl. You should give this to somebody who doesn't drink. Oh, well, I can't drink it either way. But you can. Let's see. Let's turn this around. Yeah, and I can drink the things with alcohol in them. I don't need the one without. Oh, I thought you wanted the to start off easy. No. Excuse me. Okay, then uh, let's start them off with the almost. You want, this one can be resealed. Let's do this one. This was the this is the strong one, seven and a half percent. Called God if help me. I don't know how you pronounce that. Had but Audra brought these with her first of May weekend, and we were gonna have them last week, but we forgot. So they've been sitting there waiting for you. From Kaunas. Okay. This should be the good one. Do you drink it slowly or chug, 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 chug? <laughs> I'm getting out my needle binding. I think I'm going to need a skinnier needle for this though, because I decided to do Russian 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is really dense, but I had thin yarn, so why not? So I'll show you what I made while he's playing with that. Oh, let's see, I can reach. Okay. I made a bunch of pouches. This is with some really fat, lopey wool like really fat wool. Mom donated it to my stash, so I have no idea what it is, <laughs> but most likely American. It's a bigger pouch. And then I made two smaller ones. Um, is it just me or does this smell like bananas? Let me smell it, I kind of think I did. No, that does have a, almost a banana flavor to it. Hmm. <laughs> do we need to do a close up of you? Well, as long as it isn't mangoes. Oh, by the way, for anyone who is new, Carl is a Viking guide in the village, and we are after hours. Yeah. It has a banana taste, but it's actually good. It's actually good? 
Oh yep. my god, he likes it. He really, really likes it, Audra. Have you ever? No, I have to show you the life commercials from the '70s with Mikey. He likes it. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Mm. <laughs> they uh, try to trick him into trying a new cereal because they think it's going to be gross because it's supposed to be good for you. But Mikey likes it. It's like somebody shoved more alcohol and a banana into a Guinness. Oh, I kind of think that would be good. Mm. Oh, I want to drink some, but I can't. I'm not taking chances. Look how happy he is. I think that's going down quickly. Mm. <laughs> All right, you enjoy that. I'm showing off more needle biting. So these ones are made with blown up. The reason I did pouches is because I only had a little bit left of this yarn. Apparently I could have done a bigger one, but... And these are needle tension, by the way. These ones are. This is also thumb tensioned. These are needle tensioned. And then, what else did I make? I made a hat with the rest of my plant dyed wool. This green one and this, this one is plant dyed with tree beard. You can kind of see the color. Maybe if I go the other way, you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, it's a bit more truer. It comes off looking kind of brown, but it's green. There we are. Now you can show it pretty clearly. And this one has a little bit of a brown hue. This is actually a weaker dose of the walnut yarn. And this is tree beard in an iron pot. Tree beard is, um, it's a kind of lichen that hangs off of trees. It looks like Gandalf's beard. Or actually, it looks a bit like this on the trees. <laughs> and you can throw it in an iron pot with your yarn. And because it's a lichen, it has so many tannins in it, you don't even need to treat your yarn first. You can just shove it right in there. So if you see this hanging off of a tree, either Carl has been there or <laughs> it's tree beard. If you see me <laughs> hanging off a tree, it's like been a body bad season. <laughs> So there you go. That's what that's colored with. So there you go. So I made a spiral hat. This is a round start spiral hat. We could do that in the future if you can see how it started there. I did the lazy kind of a start or the, um, what's it called? The uh, deconstructed round start. If you've seen that one anyway. I do actually have a little video of that on Instagram, but there's a lot of people that did it. I did not recreate. I didn't create the wheel. Somebody else did. But uh, you basically take two starts and then you run the tails through to each other and then you continue around and around and then I ended these in two different places one there and one there so that went in the shop today didn't sell fortunately because I forgot to take a picture of it and then I had a little bit of leftover so we have another pouch and then we have the really wonky items here let's see the wrist warmers. This is uh, some yarn I actually bought at a market that's got dyed with, uh, I can't remember what it's dyed with, tansies or something, but it's, it was the color I wasn't good at getting at the time. I made a hat out of that. That one sold right away. Long time ago, then I put leftover yarns in there. There's two different, there's like three yarns in here. But these two are thinner than this yarn. So this is done with Oslo, but I had to do Mammon to make it just as thick or just as dense. Otherwise this would have been really, really loopy. However, in order to do that, because this is a tighter stitch than this one, I had to increase. So you can see, I think I do one, two, and then I increase one, two, and then I increase. No, here's an increase, sorry. And then two and increase. And I did that until as long as it wasn't going outwards. So these turned out pretty cool. But the reason why I don't really care for them too much personally is because... I only had enough green to get me here of this light green and I kind of my OCD wants it to go this far down so they look a little they look they just feel like they're not pulled down all the way <laughs> but they are they're the right length it just feels like the green should come to here is anybody with me on this or this this kind of stuff bugs me I feel like it should have a natural color change where my finger is yeah the yellow green color was awesome so this one I did buy at a market. I bought it, I think, at um, Oslo Medieval Festival. No, or maybe Tunsberg Medieval Festival. But uh, there's a lady from Denmark that plant dyes some beautiful, beautiful yarn. Oslo Medieval Festival. I think that's happening uh, the end of May. The exact same time as the uh, Null Binding Festival in Odense that we're going to. Sorry, Oslo. Carl and I are going to get our needle binding on. Yeah, so you get it. It just that's the only thing is it, it almost looks like they're made for little kids, but they're actually quite okay size wise. It's just that 
I, f I feel like the color needs to change here. It just feels like they look too small. Like I'm wearing, trying to wear kids' gloves. Anyway, normally I put things that are plant dyed a little bit more expensive in the store, but I didn't on these because it bugs me that much. <laughs> so they're actually the normal price. Okay. Yellow is the color of the month. How's your Carl, your beer going, Carl? It's doing fine. Yeah. Okay, yellow is the color of the month. So I can show you more needle binding here. We're gonna do, I've started a pouch with this yarn and this is, I think it's called baby yarn or something. I don't know, I've had it in my stash forever, but it's quite thin, so I thought it would be fine to do um, a denser stitch. So Russian two plus two plus two, or, oh my God, how do you pronounce that one? They, I don't know, ask the finish. Anyway, uh, you got some comments too on your beer here, Carl. We'll have to get back to that. I just, I pulled my stitch, so I have to loosen it. There we go. So this looks like this. Sorry, this on the right side. And this on the wrong side. And there's three different ways to do the Russian stitches, which I kind of like. So yarn goes up, thumb goes in. You have to have six loops when you start this which means I didn't like my start. So for this one, you're gonna wanna be very positive that you take them in the row or you don't mix up your um, rekeferle. <laughs> I'm losing my English. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna lose the order that it goes in. This is the first loop, second loop, third loop, fourth loop, fifth loop, and the sixth loop. It has to be in order because you know what happens if you don't? If you mix up the order, this happens. I don't know what it, I, I mixed it. So I will be cutting this here. <laughs> It'll be just a little bit longer than this, the bag, I think. Anyway, I'm an expert, people, remember? <laughs> okay, so don't mix up your loops. So one way of doing this is, it, this is like, um, Regular version, one plus one, but you're doing two. So you leave two on your thumb, sec or the third and the fourth, fifth and sixth loop. Stretch them out so you can find them and make sure you know which ones are which. You're gonna go behind the last two, the fifth and sixth loop, go over the third and fourth loop and under the first and second loop and the leader yarn and pull through. And of course this is on uh, Sana's page, New Lachanos. Oh, I tried to splice this yarn and found out it's super washed, so my splice sucks. I bet I ruined this. See? Bad splice. It's gonna break. <laughs> okay, so I'll do that one one more time this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Do I have that right? Yeah, four, five, six. Always easy to check on this side of the thumb. And then... You go backwards through the fifth and the sixth loop, jump over the third and fourth, and go under the first and the second loop, and the leader yarn, and pull through. So that looks pretty harmless. Actually it is, oh this is going to drive me nuts, I have to splice this one more time. More spit. How's your beer, Carl? It's pretty good. You already emptied the bottle. The, yes, <laughs> Look out! It's in the glass, it though. Some left in the glass, though. Yeah, the schnabel glass. Okay, if I can splice this a bit more. Do you know how hard it was for me to find yellow yarn? Because um, yellow is one of my least favorite colors, unfortunately. And I usually will over dye this with green and get some cool acid get looking yellow, uh, acid green color. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I not pull that all the way through? It looks weird there. No, it's just the way it looks. Okay, the one that tightens is the first one. Okay, so another one, you can go, you go the, through the third and the fourth loop this way, reach back, take the fifth and the sixth loop that way, then go back out again through the third and fourth, and in. This is an easier movement, maybe, but it is a bit more complicated to see. Let's see, I was gonna switch needles. Well, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So for this one, you take the third and the fourth loop, 
from underneath and hold it behind. Go backwards through the fifth and the sixth. Go out of the third and fourth again. And, yeah, and this is exactly the same, doing the same thing as the previous stitch. It's just a different way of doing it. And I've got that big, thick change there. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Can do that one one more time. Under third and fourth, pull it over and go behind through the fifth and the sixth, then out the third and the fourth, and under the first and the second. Okay. Now, oh, there's my splice, it's so horrible, but this is such a dense stitch, it's not gonna go anywhere anyway. Maybe that's a good spot for applique later, I don't know. You could embroider on this stitch, though it's so dense. Okay, so another way of doing it is to take, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you take, you leave the first two on your thumb, take the third and the fourth and put them on your finger, your forefinger, like that. Then you can take the fifth and the, oops, my hair went in my face. The fifth and the sixth this way, and then go out here and under here. Yeah, this is some crappy yarn. I picked the right stitch. Not only is it thin, but it's uh, it's really getting old. One, two, three, four, five, six, sorry. So again, this way you would take the third and the fourth and put it on your finger, your forefinger. Now, uh, Sana has these on her YouTube right now, or, um, Neulachenos, if you look it up anyway. She'll have this listed as variant C. The same stitch variant A, B, and C. A was the first way we did it. B was the second way we did it. And now we're on C, the third way to do it. So you have one, two, three, four. And then you go this way through five and six. Out three and four. And under one and two. So there you go. One, two, three, C. Don't mix up your order. Four, five, six. So again, you take one and or two, three and four over the forefinger. Go from behind on five and six, under there and under there. Ta-da! Now you try. <laughs> I'm gonna catch up on comments. We'll watch Carl drink more beer. How was your work today, Carl? Pretty standard. Oh, you survived? Yeah. Yep. Anyway, it looks quite cool, the stitch. I just can't for the life of me understand why every tourist shoot over the target. Shoot over the target? Yeah. Oh, I have to cut that off. I did something different there. <laughs> I mixed up my loops, I think. Or maybe doing it the other way caused a difference. I don't know. But I'm taking it out. Oh, I didn't like the way the arm was splitting there anyway. Over the target. Are you talking in archery? Uh, yeah. Explain. Then they shoot over. And then they aim another arrow and shoot that one over too. Yeah. And then they try again with the third arrow and shoot over again. <laughs> it's... I've Did... been doing a little bit of an experiment today by not telling them to aim lower. Yeah. And they don't understand it on their own. Really? They just don't. I always tell them, imagine this hand that's going straight out when you're shooting archery. This arm, try to aim with this arm. Wherever that arm is going, that's where you're trying to shoot. But that really depends on your arrow being in at a 90 degree angle. What I usually, what I used to do when somebody shot over is that I tell them, aim a little bit lower than you think you have to. Yeah. And then I hit. But I was thinking, this should be pretty uh, elementary. Yeah. If you keep shooting over, you have to aim lower, right? Well, that's usually what I do when I shoot. But, I but they don't, it. they don't get it on their own. No, but some people don't understand you have to pull it, so they're trying to grab it like this, and then they have like a death grip on the string and won't let yeah, the string grow. but the thing is, for people who are really strong in their fingers, that actually works. Okay, I can't do that. So I don't correct them. If they manage to pull it off, that's fine. Yeah. Because that's how they shoot with their toy bow bows. They pinch the arrow like this and pull it back. Uh, that yeah, I suppose. works if you are really strong in your fingers. I can't do it with our bows, but some people are a lot stronger in their fingers than I am. 
Yeah. So some people can pull it off just fine. Huh. I've even seen people do it with the 50 pound bow. Uh, so some people just have... The 50 pound grip. bow, that thing is heavy. Death grip pinch, uh, so they can pinch through anything. How much weight is the kid bow? Uh, probably about ton. ten. Ten. Okay. Because yeah. uh, I can handle that less, one, but maybe a little bit more. I'm guessing. Mm. And then the regular ones that we have there, twenty. They 25? are twenty-five. Twenty-five, yeah. The uh, tourist-friendly long bows because they have a shelf on them, whereas the actual long bow does not. Yeah. A shelf like the 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 edge of the bow will go like this and kind of stick out where you're supposed to put your arrow yeah and uh, the shelf is a kind of a necessary tool for us yeah because uh, in 999 out of a thousand arrows it's no problem you can just leave it on your knuckle yeah but on the thousand arrow one of the feathers is loose and that will then smash into your hand and give you a cut Oh, yeah. I have one of these cuts on my finger. You actually got a cut like that. Oh, I do not. Where is it? I can't even see it. Your permanent. You see cut. on top of my uh, on top of my knuckle. Here, here. There. Ah, he does. It's right there. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see, go like that. Oh, that looks painful, Carl. Drink more. But the, <laughs> uh, the thing is, uh, it will normally turn out fine, and as long as you pay attention to the arrows and see if the feathers are coming loose, it's no problem. Yeah. But uh, it's um, when we shoot as many arrows uh, every day as we do. Yeah. Sooner or later, if you have, if you don't have a shelf on your bow, you're going to have a tourist getting a serious cut on their hand, hmm. and that is probably best to avoid. We used to have one guy who told it like, "You swear to God, you were going to end up in a murder film or something, or Dexter would have to solve that crime." Uh, I, I, I don't. Could slice your whole finger off. No, he was very worried about people uh, dry firing the bows. And you shouldn't do that. That's not good for the what bow. What does it mean to dry fire a bow for those who don't know? Pull it back and let it go without an arrow on the string. Right. Uh, you shouldn't do that because the bow is kind of designed to move the weight of the arrow. And if it doesn't, it uh, it's too much energy basically just being absorbed by the bow. You'll break your bow. I saw that happen at a medieval festival. Some kids were playing with toy bows and they yeah. broke one. But uh, from the way he explains it, it sounds like the bow is going to go thermonuclear, criti super critical, <laughs> and then just uh, vaporize you and the entire area around you. <laughs> he had a flair for the dramatics, shall we say. Yeah. Okay. So he always started every archery session by telling the tourists how far away we are from the nearest hospital. <laughs> well, Which is a little bit on the dramatic side. Let's see, I'll catch up on chat here. Well, yeah. We can look this way for today. Well, uh, read. Okay, I gotta catch a way up. We're like way back into. Uh... Okay, so we got the temperature in. Arlene is 20 degrees in Winnipeg, so she's about on par with us, I think. Celsius, by the way. Uh, yes, and Raymond has spread his pics around if you want to see his sweater. He has the sweater that he's working on. He's doing some um, very good. Uh, He's going to do really little. He's doing really good progression, progression photos. I like the one that he posted as well, where you can see he just starts the shoulder, making for the shoulder. So you have to see that. Uh, let's see. Not too much blowing, says Bruda. Good. Let me know if it gets bad, and we'll move. It's kind of nice not sitting under a roof today. Kivi has been null binding daily on my on her blanket project since New Year's, and now it's big enough to use as a shawl. So it's a functional project now. <laughs> she can just wear it and work it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Torben's very excited about your beer. Give him a 7% so we can see him dance. Oh, he is. This is what seven and a half look like. That won't get you to dance? Yet. But we've got more. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Torben says that beats mango, by the way. Uh, watching Carl use his CX as a bottle opener never gets old, says Peruta. Oh, we have to do that in the next one, I guess. I didn't think no, about that. No, the next one has a different kind of cork, yeah. yeah. Let's see. I keep forgetting, but I got so used to that now. And she says Kwas is amazing, by the way, that beer. Uh, Peruta likes it. She's had that one. I have not had that one. Uh, and now Albert is looking for it, so we've sold him on that. Arlene gets it. Hey, hey, Mikey, I don't like beer, but I drink it out of that glass anytime. Yes, tell us about that glass, by the way. 
for those of us who don't know? This is, uh, in English, it's called the claw baker. Uh, in Norwegian, it's called the snobble beggar. And I like the Norwegian term better because snobble means the trunk of the elephant. And these things, I would say, they look more like elephant trunks to me than they look like claws. I uh, don't know if you can see it. It's got like a... Yeah. Oh, and pointing on the opposite side. No, look on the camera. There, you can see that there's open space between the yeah. snobbles. And um, uh, glass blowing is one of the arts that didn't really disappear with the fall of the Roman Empire. It kept going for a while after the Roman Empire uh, went belly up. Yeah. Particularly in uh, uh, what's now the Czech Republic and in England. To but bring them then to for some reason, uh, around the beginning of the Viking Age, most of the places where people knew how to do this just burned to the ground, mysteriously. So it kind of went under around the early Viking Age. But this uh, was considered super exclusive in the Viking Age. So being silver rich is one thing, but being glass rich is something else. What do you like more? Silver or glass? Well, I live in the modern age, so I kind of know the difference. But <laughs> if I lived in the Viking age, I would absolutely go for the glass. Yeah? Do you think we should bring that to Denmark? When you do, when we do the, we have to do the live from Denmark for the needle binding festival. They're bringing you beer. Don't you think they have something to drink from in Denmark? Paper cup, just not gonna cut it with that outfit on. <laughs> A Dixie cup, maybe. <laughs> okay. Let me turn around here and then we can read more. Yeah, there. Okay. Uh, Torben's drinking coffee in case of baby. Good boy. He's got uh, baby due any day now. Yeah, baby number two. Uh, so you can go through the teething and everything all over again, Torben. It'll be awesome. Actually, you need two kids. They play with each other. <laughs> it's kind of easier. Um, Raymond says, we have a winner, referring to your beer. Kiwi says, I'm drinking Sima. Uh, Finnish homemade drink uh, based on lemon. Then I probably, is it probably Sima? Anyway, a uh, homemade drink based on lemon. Do you know that one? A Finnish homemade drink? No, I don't. No? Torben says he used his PlayStation 2 as a bottle opener for two years. It had the perfect height. <laughs> Something you don't often hear in the Viking village. Oh, I like my PlayStation 2. It's the perfect height to open my beer. <laughs> Arlene says, love that green yellow color. Yeah, we read that one before. Yeah, no, I loved this one. It was the greatest hat, but uh, that hat sold immediately. Um, beautiful plant dyed yarn. You know, if somebody does a better job than me, which is pretty much everybody, when it comes to plant dyeing, then I usually will buy it. So I'm really looking forward to the needle binding festival because they'll have, uh, um, I'll put it here, we have a better view. They'll have some new yarn. So we're going to bring extra luggage just for the yarn. <laughs> But when I have tourists who ask me about plant dyeing, mm -hmm. I tell them that we have two plant dyeing ladies in the village. Yeah. One measure the temperature to the uh, two decimals after the Celsius yeah. and measures the pH and makes uh, copious notes about everything she does. That's Kristen. And the other one just throws random shit in a pot and boil it and see what color comes out. That would be me. I don't really see eye to eye. No. Kristen makes fun of me. I call it my dandelion gut yarn because I threw all, everything on the dandelion in it. I threw in the flower, threw in the leaves, threw in the stems, threw in the roots, maybe a little bit of dirt. It was my dandelion gut yarn. It came out a different color. than As long as it wasn't white, I was happy. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Can look over that way too. Uh, Torben says he's used the shelf from Ikea as his, um, I use a shelf from Ikea on my bow, some assembly required. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what we meant, Torben. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Pruta post the link of the stitch, by the way, if you wanted to see how to do it. She's got a link to Sana's uh, page there. Sana has excellent videos. This is why I actually don't have, one of the biggest reasons I don't have any, or very few videos of how to do stitches, because she does them so well. I don't want to compete. There's no point competing there better. Prude is drinking uh, Hur Gordon, or is it Huwing Garden, or Hur Gordon? Anyway, that's how you pronounce it. It's Norwegian. 0% uh, alcohol. Yummy. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Yep, Raymond believes with me. Yes, the line, definitely the line should be lower. Prude says it bugs her too. Anne says she understands. 
so they've cost the price of the regular not bound wrist warmers it drives me nuts they just yeah someone's gonna love them though you know with enough dirt they're gonna be the same color anyway <laughs> uh let's see beer is the color of the month with ban beer in the color of the month with banana no, no, it's where this actually works. Color of the month. If somebody told me that take a Guinness, <laughs> add banana and more alcohol, then it will be good. I would probably doubt that. <laughs> but uh, no, it actually works. This is good beer. Needle binding and beer. Oops, there we go. <laughs> Can needle bind you a glass cover? No, can't ruin that glass. By covering it up. Uh, let's see, I'm catching up a little bit. Late. Oh, yeah, Prude has even got a link in there about the claw beaker. That's quite good. Garcia is a left handed bow woman. Mm. How do you feel about that? I should left handed myself. I have dominant eyesight on my left eye, so I. Yeah, that's right. To, to uh, put it that way. I had a very good archery day the other day. You're almost starting to sound slurred. I, yes, I am, because <laughs> it's strong there. Um, I had uh, tourists that uh, in the family, there was one kid who was left-handed and the rest of them were right-handed. So I basically go, okay, when you shoot right-handed, you do like this and I look at them. I don't look at the target. <laughs> and then I demonstrate uh, right-handed shooting and I hit basically in the heart of the ball. And then I go, oh, and for you who is left-handed, you do it like this. And then I demonstrate left-handed shooting. And I, again, I'm just staring at them and I'm not looking at the target. And it hits like this far away from the other arrow. So that went to like zero to slurred in like that was just pure <laughs> luck. But as the runa points out, the more you shoot arrow, the more lucky you are going to be. There you go. Okay. Seriously though, zero to slurred in. It's seven percent <laughs> woman. Fifteen what? minutes in your whole... You drank it quite quickly. This thing is how many ounces? Uh. Let's see. Ounces. Ounces. I'm sorry. It's a half a liter. <laughs> Wasn't it ma'am in America? I still haven't switched over. Okay, half a liter. Not gonna even figure out what How that is. How many foot pounds, pounds per square inch is that? And you have this much left? I'm gonna let Peruda go ahead and link that so I don't have to get it. <laughs> I'm not thinking today. Uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, something to do with the yarn is always in grams or ounces. Okay, let's see. We can look at you, which is gonna change your speech but it's a good direction to look at go looking over your head at the mountains here while we catch up some more uh the name of the stitch that i was making i actually did write it down and i forgot what it was yeah anyway but it's russian two plus two plus two look at that we got a nice little your fur is flying all over the place there russian two plus two plus two was the name of the stitch anyway and uh Variant A and B and C. There's three different ways to make that one, and she's got a sauna's got a video for every one of them. She's the one with the blue yarn on YouTube, and sometimes she does them in Finnish and in English. But these ones are done, no language, just stitch, and she does them like three or four times each video. Okay, Pruda says the last time she did archery was before she had boobs, and she's worried that she'd get in the way now. Preaching to the choir, sister. Because when I shoot archery, I have my hand out like this. Let's see, like that. Oh, it's really blowing in the microphone now. But um, these puppies are a little bit bigger. <laughs> so now when I shoot like this, these things go flying. <laughs> the bow catches them on the way out. These, uh, my Viking boobs are my turtle brooches. I think I have to show it this way. It's the other way. Anyway, they go flying. <laughs> I had a little pendant hanging off of them once with the, I called him Drummer Man. Um, it took me a while to find him because he went, phew. <laughs> so, yeah, but why why do I get my boobs caught in the uh, bow when shooting, Carl? Is it because my arm is too far out or this way it's Well, done? you're supposed to make a triangle. So, uh, this side of humongous honkabonkas. They're not exactly small, Carl. We're talking to, G here. You should be able to <laughs> pull like this without touching your boobs. So if you were flat chested like you, you'd be okay. But according to the Romans, the Amazons removed one of their breasts to be better archers. So there Holy might crap. be something to it. Seriously, you didn't just make that up? No, this is according to the Romans. I think the Romans might adopt the Amazons, but that's another <laughs> story. 
If it's blowing, is it blowing too much in the microphone now? Because my hair's going everywhere. Okay. Speaking of bazongas. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'd be definitely afraid to fly with that glass. It would definitely be carry-on. Okay, so we're leaving the glass at home. Viking Dixie cups for you in Denmark. Love all those places just mysteriously combusted. <laughs> uh, with the clawbeaker thing. By the way, and Outer's here. Outer, we're drinking your beer. Carl is a little sauced. A little bit. <laughs> we have to call the house owner. How do you spell? So oh my god. <laughs> probably shouldn't go too deep into the sauce today. Are you going to save the seven and a half for next, or the seven for next week? The other one, I think we save for next okay, week. Okay, it's because a good if thing. I drink two of these, we <laughs> might sign a contract that we won't be comfortable with. No. <laughs> we're renewing our lease, this our, uh, our rental contract, because I'm. <laughs> we're still in the process yeah. of moving, and we haven't bought anything yet, so. And he wants us to cut grass, so I might accidentally volunteer to cut the grass every day if I keep drinking this. You use a lawnmower, not a scissors. Or a sc <laughs> Yeah, but that's not really authentic, is it? So there you go, Audra, the effects of your beer. It is so good, we're going to have to do the rest next week. <laughs> Carl likes it. Banana beer, banana Guinness, it's for you. It's super sweet, but it is also... That was this one for those who are wondering. This is what I he liked. I can hear my own slurring now. I'm... <laughs> spell Mississippi. Mississippi. No, spell it. Don't say it. Spell it. M-I-S-S-I-P-S-S-I-P-A. <laughs> Correct. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Yeah, I thought you were right on. <laughs> it's a winner, Audra. He's going to need more. <laughs> so this is really good. I want to... Uh, See, Arlene can spell it. <laughs> how do you pronounce this? Yeah, well, considering we have no sound. Beer... Beer... I have no idea. I don't know what the... Um, uh, the signs over the letters mean no because you've got like the the z with a crown the c with a crown and the y with a tail going in the wrong direction but hey it's judas beer beer sietzi <laughs> beer sietzi something like that yeah that could be okay I have to read more. Well, I need to know what it's <laughs> called because I have to order more of it. You have to order more. Yeah, we can get a Vin Monopoly. Save the bottle. <laughs> we can order it through the Wine Monopoly. I like that name for it. Literally translates to Wine Monopoly, but it's... Uh... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Torben says, Carl... Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I think Torben's a little disappointed. <laughs> I don't think Look how happy he is, Audra. Look how happy you made Carl. This is actually good. It really is. <laughs> now, needle bind Carl. Oh, the hat came off. <laughs> Back off, ladies. He's mine. <laughs> Mangoes should be nowhere near bear. But bananas is just fine. <laughs> it's <weird. laughs> It's a winner. It's a winner. <laughs> okay, let's see. They're all spelling Mississippi, which is very good. Uh, Raymond knows how to spell it too. Arlene, the non-Americans can spell it. Carl, <laughs> you're not American either, though. So there you go. Yes, and I'm also not <laughs> from the south in America, and I'm not from America. I'm from the north. But that's one of the first things we learn how to spell. If you can spell Mississippi, you can spell anything. But you got your S's and P's backwards there for a little while. Your P's were trapped by the S's. <laughs> okay, I'm totally good at Ah, Danglish Girl is back. She says in Denmark this evening it's 21 degrees Celsius and it feels like summer. Danglish Girl? Danglish, yeah. That's when you're speaking Danish and English at the same time. So you speak English, but nobody understands It's like you. Norglish, but with Denmark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Swinglish for Swedish and English and Spanglish. Yes, good boy! Big capital letters you get from Torben and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Torben's very proud. Audra's laughing her ass off over there. <laughs> there goes that, says Peruta. 
Uh, I have to mind your P's and Q's, and in his case, you have to mind your P's and S's. Do you know what it means to mind your P's and Q's? It's an American thing, or English thing, actually. It's English speaking basically thing. It, uh, the term means something like be careful. Or mind be... your P's and Q's, uh, basically be polite and do what you're told. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, you know, hat slamming beer. <laughs> That's what I'm most missing here. Every kid in North America can spell Mississippi by grade one, and you can't play in skipping, says Arlene Cross. <laughs> um, or you can't play in skipping. This is true. Um, nope, we all learned how to say that. That's why there's even a song for it. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 <laughs> Uh, maybe one more beer will turn Carl into Hallgrim the Half-Orc. Orc. <laughs> Go ahead, Hallgrim the Half-Orc. What does he sound like? <laughs> I want to make it absolutely clear <laughs> that we have made an agreement. <laughs> you have sworn loyalty to me. <laughs> and you can't go just go along and do whatever the hell you feel like. <laughs> You have to do what I tell you to do. <laughs> nope, it was only one beer needed to turn him into all Grim the half work. Carl, the dungeon master. <laughs> in um, role-playing games. Let's see. Uh, seven to 17 and a half ounces. 17 ounces US. 17 and a half ounces about was what Raymond was writing as the half a liter. Thank you for doing the math for me. My brain has worked enough for one day. Uh... Is that Troy answers or is it another kind of answers? Yes. <laughs> Say ounces. Ounces. Say it three times fast. Ounces, ounces, ounces. Nah. The first time you said it, though, it was pretty slurred. Ounces. <laughs> okay, I missed a bunch in here. No, I think maybe I got most of the chat in, though. Uh, two by seven cow ponger stitch. No, Torben, nice try. <laughs> Not the cowpongers. I don't even think there is a stitch cowponger. Uh, hey, where does what does cowponger mean, by the way? Cowponger is like the suburban de area around Sondal. Yep, but a lot of people will call a Viking market a cowpong. Yes, because it has the same root word. It was mm -hmm. a place where people did trade back in the days. Yep. But when you're talking to somebody like Turban, who's from Sondal, yes, cowponger means. Rural dipshit idiot who lives outside of the center. So Marita and Tour Eric live in Kaupangen. Yes. You're such. Oh, he's evil. They live in that house when they're here. <laughs> can, can Carl say "Yoo hoo, big summer blowout"? Yoo hoo, big summer blowout. No, it's a big summer blowout. It's like something you're supposed to be excited about. Yoo hoo, big summer blowout. <laughs> Bring more! <laughs> oh my god, what are we gonna do for the next 12 minutes? <laughs> yeah, I'm from Cowponger, Carl, says Torben. <laughs> you made Albert's day, he's laughing, Raymond's laughing. <laughs> Let's see, can you sing the theme song to um, uh, <laughs> what is that movie? I was just suddenly thinking, oh, I lost. Did it ding 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 ding. What the hell are you on about? You know that's ah, uh, it's ah. Uh, I just had it. Uh, Deliverance. Can you see theme the, sing the theme song to Deliverance? <laughs> you want me to do the dueling banjos thing? <laughs> dueling banjos, yeah. No, I cannot do that. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> okay. Uh, she purchased dueling banjos. Thank you. She got it. <laughs> yeah. I had Deliverance in my head. I started to ask the question, and then I suddenly lost the word Deliverance. <laughs> I saw that was on HBO now, by the way. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. That's, um, <laughs> they all like the big summer blowout. <laughs> uh, Raymond says, M I double S I double S I double P I double P P I. Why do I say double P double M I double S I S? No, I, yeah. Anyway, no, I was saying it the right way. I was suddenly thinking I added an extra P in there, but, uh, yeah, no, I got, I think we got it all. So, Carl, yes. what is 17th of May? We do this every year. 17th of May is coming up. That's Wednesday. Well, it's the Norwegian um, National Day. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, basically the commemoration of our signing of our uh, constitution. 
Grundlov it's called in Norwegian. Uh, this is from back when Norway used to be a part of Denmark. So mm. Norway and Denmark was in a union, which basically means that Norway was the little brother and Denmark was the big brother. But then 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 Denmark because of their horrendously bad strategic planning ended up on Napoleon's side during the Napoleonic War. And Norway went as war booty basically to Sweden. But we had like five minutes of independence in 1814 between being under Denmark and being under Sweden, where we very quickly wrote our constitution and signed it. And then we were under Sweden for a hundred years, but now we had our own constitution. <laughs> So we... Um, this gets more entertaining when you've had a little bit... kind of made life <laughs> kind of difficult for the Swedes by keeping this union alive. Because, among other things, and this is kind of the interesting bit, Norway insisted on having their own foreign uh, offices, their own embassies, their own... Uh, their, make their own deals on the international market. Sweden was not a big fan of this. We were basically threatened to beat them up, and I accepted our independence. <laughs> that is a hundred years of history, very compromised, very <laughs> compressed, but that's basically what happened. But you did it! <laughs> so, so the 17th of May is the day that the uh, Norwegian constitution was signed at Eidsvold back in 1914, mm. and it has been our national day ever since to the great annoyance of the Swedes when we were trying to be in a union with them because well, that didn't really work out. You know, but they Nobody can cooperate with the Swedes. It the, just doesn't work. You know, the Swedes celebrate the 17th of May too. They say that's the day they let the slaves free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no? Well, just we, had to, every we had to threaten them with quite a lot of violence to get them to let us go, but uh, I did in the end. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, does Karen have a boonad? No. You know what? It's been. I actually. Well, I do actually have a boonad. Uh, it's inherited. It's my kid's uh, great grandmother um, that has it. Uh, she gave it to me. She was also like, you know, thinner than Carl. <laughs> and um, well, Carl and I are the perfect ten. I'm the zero, and he's the one. <laughs> so uh, I could either sew it out, but actually, I decided I'm gonna let my kid inherit it instead um, because the the uh, usually you get your first boonad. Um, when you have confirmation at 14, if, if you're still following tradition. Anyway, so one of the twins will get that one and the other one will uh, either get one from the other side of the family or we'll get a new one. The more sentimental one will get the one from the old more. We should get you either a Kistendracht mm -hmm. or a Norfjord Burnod. Ah, do I need a Norfjord Burnod? Yeah, you're with me now. Ah, so look at that. I can't look like I'm going after the... Those things cost in like 50,000 uh, euro, I mean, Norwegian kroner. I mean, they cost at least 50,000 Norwegian kroner. Yeah, but we are used to collecting silver for all other reasons, so why not? It's going to cost a lot of these, like uh, all the bling you and I have on times three. <laughs> or maybe, how much, how much bling do we got here? Costing silver is not that difficult. I can do it. No, but you, the whole boon knot, I mean, is expensive. And then there's the silver pieces that goes along with it. You can do the textiles. <laughs> I can do the silver. That's yes. a lot of embroidery. <laughs> That's a lot of, lot of embroidery. Anyway, but they have, a, they have very specific uh, ways that you're supposed to make it. They're very special guidelines. So if you're going to make the boon knot, you have to usually buy a kit. Uh, because you have, the ex you have to have the right material. You have to have... Uh, and you have to do the right. You have to do it everything perfectly. If not, you will like be doomed forever to death by uh, the Bunad police. Yeah. And everyone on the 17th of May will look at you and go, "That's just not right." No, <laughs> only the Norsk log will look at you like that. Who's and they are like it? five out of a thousand. Mm. Well, maybe. But uh, actually, um, one thing that I do kind of like is in the last, I don't know, at least 10 years, it's been uh, fairly accept It's been pretty much acceptable to wear your finer Viking clothes uh, on the 17th of May. So I have been wearing this one, but now I have to get it fixed because <laughs> the embroidery is starting to wear off. Seatbelt, everything. <laughs> but anyway, I usually wear this one. And if you've got all your bling with you and all your jewelry on it, etc., it's, it's actually quite, whoops, it's quite acceptable to do that. Look, I got hair like Carl. Watch that. See? I look like Carl. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so I've been usually wearing, uh, yeah, just the wearing the Viking clothes, but I should probably re-embroider my stuff soon. Uh, but it's made with the same uh, fabric. This is um, Vaudemel, 
which is like um, woven or boiled leather. But it's the same. Uh, it's the same uh, fabric that they use. Uh, I gotta sew the ends under. I see. That's it's so tightly woven, though. In three years, that as much as it has is frayed. <laughs> it's uh, actually been sewn under, but it, that's as far as it's um, frayed. That's how well it's boiled. But anyway, you can see the thickness of it. Uh, it's quite thick. That's kind of another thing that is funny with Norwegian law. Yeah. Uh, to carry a knife. <gasps> yes, Arlene. Like this one. Bottle I, opener? Uh, I need to have something called Aktverdi Formål, which is a kind of, the best translation would be something like honorable purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is a legal term because it appears in Norwegian laws about weapons, mm -hmm. but it's never defined. So you just have to use legal precedences to determine what's Aktverdi Formål, honorable purpose or not. So you are allowed to carry a knife if you have an honorable purpose. You're going to stand a little further so, away from him. Uh, <laughs> if you are a Sami person, you are allowed to carry the traditional Sami knife mm -hmm. because that's considered an honorable purpose. <laughs> uh, peeling an apple outside of the Norwegian castle is not considered an honorable purpose. How do you know this? Because a guy got convicted for peeling an <laughs> apple in the, outside the Norwegian castle with a big knife. The male Bunads have usually a um, something that looks a bit like a, a carving knife. Uh, yes, it's called a tolleni, tollekniv. Whittling knife, It's yeah. like usually like this big with mm -hmm. the blade of about this. And if you are wearing a Bunad, carrying a knife is considered aktvarde formål, honorable purpose. Um, I'm yeah. just not sure if I can carry my sword in a certain my tog or not. I want to see you try to peel an apple with it. That's no problem. <laughs> I can peel um, as many apples as you want. It's absolutely not an issue. Peel bananas and make beer out of it. Um, my sword is just marginally more dull than this, and this is go ahead. Pretty super sword. What is shot. your uh, what is your your um, goal when sharpening your sex? For those who haven't heard it, I want to be able to take the bikini line off the moth without the moth noticing. Be that, okay, so for those of us who are not slurring our speech, he wants to take the bikini line of a moth. <laughs> Usually it's a fly, but you've gone over to moth now? No, it's always been a moth. It's always been. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. And there's always issues, too, about people taking their brunads over um, to, or on a plane anyway. Either they're, maybe they're going to go visit their family, because oftentimes you do. You've got an extended weekend. And then how do you take the damn knife with you on uh, the plane? Well, that's just retarded, because obviously yeah. everybody understands that you can't carry a knife into the cabin of a plane. Mm. If somebody is dumb enough to think that they have some kind of exception from this rule, mm. then why wouldn't the bloody Al Qaeda just wear a bloody bunad when I want to hijack the next plane? <laughs> it's it's dumb. It just makes no sense to me. Just put your <laughs> knife in your uh, not carry on, but your stored luggage, and it's no issue. One thing that is actually uh, the bunads, uh, the female ones, they're meant to be um, passed down generation after generation after generation. So for somebody like who, me, who is a yo-yo uh, dieter, as I would call it, if you watch way, way back in the early episodes of um, in the first episodes of this, um, you can see that I'm for the first, I don't know, t 10, 20, no, 20 at least. I'm losing weight more and more and more and more and more. And then I get together with Carl and I start gaining weight. <laughs> I'm feeding her too bad. No, I make him. I make extra food for him, and I forget he doesn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, now we're going into Viking season, so the weight may start to go down a bit because I run around and I don't have any time to eat. <laughs> and then the fall comes, and <laughs> anyway, so this is something that they actually uh, think about when um, making the brunads for um, for the women. They are very easily to be let out and in again. By the we'll have like extra lots and lots of extra fabric sewn in, and you can uh, easily make them so they will fit all generations <laughs> so the one that is actually made for uh my kid's great-grandmother who is really skinny uh can actually fit me there's enough fabrics but you will have to spend like twenty thousand kroner easily with a tailor to yeah. have it to have it let out but okay. there's enough fabric in there to do that the entire thing with the bunad is uh, mm -mm. 
it's very <laughs> arbitrary. And I have basically decided that in the late 1800s, the way that farmers dress, and then they kind of make a standard for a farmer from Hallingdal would wear this, a farmer <laughs> from Norfjord would wear this, Yeah. and then the, the Norwegian Husfleet, mm. which is basically... It's like the it's handcraft like, club of Norway. It's people like you who are not Vikings, to put it like that. <laughs> have decided that okay this is I used is to belong the, to Who's Fleet. I still teach for Who's Fleet. Yeah. Yeah. They have basically decided that this is the proper so North York, you know. This is the pop, uh, pop, proper Nordland Bunad. Mm -hmm. This is the proper proper so I can't pronounce the word proper for some reason. Sogn Bunad and so Take the rest of the beer away. And it is uh, completely arbitrary and also there would have been rich farmer women in Norfjord who didn't, uh, in the late 1800s, who were something that was completely different from the Norfjord Bunad. Audrey, you win on the beer. <laughs> this beer is good. I mean, beer is good. <laughs> okay, so when Maria and the, other, and the Danish are on, when we're there, this, this is where... Anne, if you're bringing Belgian beer with you, this is what you do to the Needle Binding Festival. This is what you have to compete with. If you can this do this, you Belgium, win. Was it? It was... No, 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 no. This is uh, this is from Audra. But Anne is bringing you some from Belgium when we go there. I think Maria's got beer picked out for you. You will have something to do other than yarn at the Needle Binding Festival in yeah, Denmark. It's not like I would be doing yarn under any yeah. circumstances. But... No, that's my job. <laughs> so they're they're bringing you beer. We're at 60 minutes, by the way. Let's see. This, Give uh... the man some more beer, Kieran. Let him have a little more. Carl is properly slurring. No, it's. Raymond says, Carl is properly slurring the word properly. <laughs> uh, Albert says, I'm still working on my bunad, but I haven't sewed anything yet, but I am buying the things that I need slowly. Yeah, it and is something you is collect. really good. I need to find out how to pronounce this word. <laughs> okay, Audra, there you I send a voice message, out. Whenever I'm in whatever country this is from. <laughs> she might have written it in there. Karen does yarn, Carl does Karen. <laughs> Keeps me happy. <laughs> We're a perfect 10. <laughs> ah, not going to deny that. You know, this episode got much better. This, this podcast, live, whatever the hell you want to call it. Anyway, got much better when Carl showed up and said, because, what is it? Vikings have, tes some people have <laughs> testicles. What was that like episode 36, week 36 or something like that on there? Carl shows up for the first time, surprised the crap out of Virginia and I. So we asked him to tell a story from uh, something he did earlier in the day. And uh, he says, some people have testicles. And Virginia and I literally lose our shit. He's basically um, explaining a move. It's a <laughs> move from uh, Hema, so historical European martial arts. It's a defense <laughs> against a knife attack. Oh yeah, this will be good. Yep, so he was demonstrating this. But we were not expecting him to say, some people have testicles. Where so, are you? So, uh, if somebody attacks <laughs> I can't like stand this, further back. with a thrust that goes upwards, Yeah. like this, and if you are strong enough to pull it off, I can pull this off on basically nobody, but it has been done to me <laughs> many times. You put your hand on top of your opponent's Don't cut knife. yourself with that. <laughs> you push it back like this. Then you step beside, behind him and you pull his arm up like this. <laughs> and the reason that's unpleasant is because some people have testicles. There you go. Some people have testicles. Oh, Audra sent a voice message. We'll have to hear that after. <laughs> so there you go. So anyway, ever since Carl showed up and onto the, this for the first time and says the word, some people have testicles. YouTube has never been the same. <laughs> so there you go. Speaking of which, uh, how were the plans for the Loki run this year? We don't organize the Loki run because the uh, Loki run involves tying a log to your balls. Yes. And then you run with it uh, from one end to the other. This is always something that if it does happen in Gudvang, it is not on our property and is not on the hotel property. They run along the river over there uh, because the liability is something huge. So it's, but yeah. we don't actually put that together. The, yeah. the Vikings it, themselves do it. This is something that just happens spontaneously. <laughs> yep. When you have enough idiots with a low uh, self, <laughs> uh, self pre pre preservation. Yes. <laughs> 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 
Can you have enough people with uh, too low a degree of that? Over time. <laughs> Yeah, no, so it actually, uh, but uh, bags of ice will magically appear and a bottle of mead for the person stupid enough to win <laughs> does magically appear. But no, it is not something that we actually organize. The Vikings themselves put it together uh, during the market, etc. So that, there's the Loki run for you. Um, let's see, what else am I missing here? The Danish girl says, I'm, uh, Danglish girl says, I'm so glad I caught the last bit of this. Very entertaining. Yeah, if you don't have any time to go through 165 flipping weeks of this, <laughs> we haven't had a week off. There's one episode that's missing because uh, YouTube deleted it because there was some kid playing a game in the background and the music hit a copyright law, I think. Uh, so that one of them is missing. And then there was one week I wasn't here and I think Mona sent it on my YouTube for me. Anyway, but all the other 165 weeks are otherwise there anyway. And uh, <laughs> It's always the last 15 minutes that are the best. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, uh, Greg is making quiche uh, because we have an overproduction of eggs from the chickens. So <laughs> we should go have some historically accurate quiche. Yeah, and we should also go and call our <laughs> landlord and make some kind of agreement with him. <laughs> we might. Carl's going to be mowing lawns. <laughs> Okay, anyway, we will see you next week um, after 17th May, tell you how it is. If I get around to it, you can go to Viking Valley Facebook page. I will try to do a live of the parade. It depends if I have to man the shop or not so that you can see. The Vikings will be wearing their finest Viking gear and the Norwegians will be wearing their brunads or something very dressy one way or the other anyway. It's quite cool to see the Norwegian traditional folk costumes. You can check them out. Uh, each region of Norway has a different one. <laughs> okay. I, man, I miss the his pie. Yes, he's making pie too. Okay, have a good time, guys. <laughs> Outra, thank you. <laughs> I can't wait to see what the other beer does. Yes, and as Torben says, push the like button. <laughs> and subscribe and comment and all that other stuff. I haven't answered comments in so long, but I've seen them. I gotta, I gotta get my shit together. Bye, guys. <laughs> this Bye. is fun. See you. <laughs>